Hello everyone, I am Sagar Banushali and I am going to talk about the phosphatidyl enositol phosphorylation. So earlier we have studied that the phospholipid that are present in the plasma membrane are, have the function only in the semi-permeability of the membrane. So but this phosphate also act as a precursor in the formation of the second messengers which are involved in the signaling. So this, sec uh, this phospholipids are converted to the second messengers by a variety of enzymes. These enzymes are easily activated by the extracellular signals. So the enzymes that are included in this pathway include first one phospholipase. The phospholipase enzyme is also known as the lipid splitting enzymes. That is, this enzyme breaks the bond that are, that are responsible for the formation of a phospholipid. Hence, they are known as lipid splitting enzyme. Lipid splitting enzyme. The second one is the phospholipid kinases. So, this is the enzyme that adds a phosphate group to the compound. The third one, phospholipid phosphatase. This removes the phosphate group that is present in the enzyme, that is present in the compound. So, in this video, we will talk about the derivatives or derivatives that are formed from the phosphatidyl inositol, and the second, uh, this, this derivatives function as the second messengers. So if I talk about the responses that are given by the cell which are due to the second messengers that are derived from the phosphatidyl inositol will include the first one when the acetylcholine binds to a cell surface of a smooth muscle cell it alters the target protein which further leads to the contraction of the muscle. In the second example if I talk about the binding of an ant foreign antigen to the mast cell the Binding of an antigen will lead, to, will lead to the release of the histamines from the mast cell. The release of histamines will further trigger the symptoms for the allergy attack. So these are the two examples where the responses were due to the second messengers which are derived from the phosphatidyl inositol. So further if I talk about the discovery that how this phospholipids were found that these are included or are involved in the signaling process. So, the, this was carried out by two scientists named Lovell and Mabel. These two scientists were working on the effects of acetylcholine on the RNA synthesis in the pancreatic cells. That is their aim was to study the effect of, of acetylcholine on RNA synthesis in pancreatic cell. So what they did is, they incubated slices of a pigeon's pancreas with the orthophosphate. So incubation of pigeon's pancreas slices of pigeon's pancreas with orthophosphate. So this orthophosphate included P32 radioisotope. So they, they thought that the P32 radioisotope would be utilized in the RNA synthesis. But later studies revealed that this P32 was, was incorporated into the plasma membrane for the formation of the phosphatidyl inositol, which was further carried, which was further converted into its derivatives. Uh, These derivatives are collectively termed as phosphoinositides, that is phosphoinositides. So it was confirmed that the inositol ring can be phosphorylated by number of kinases. So if I draw the phosphatidyl inositol structure, this is the first carbon, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. This is connected to a phosphate group. This is the glycerol and these are the acid fatty acid chains so this all these are connected with bound by OH groups
so the kinases that add phosphate group to the inositol ring included pi phospho inositol 4 kinase as there is a phosphate group present on the first carbon the pi4 kinase will add a phosphate group to the fourth carbon also after if i phosphorylate this compound this inositol compound which have which had a phosphate group at the fourth carbon there will be a phosphate group at the fifth carbon also so there will be two phosphates the uh, three phosphate the one at the uh, the first phosphate phosphate at the first carbon second phosphate at the fourth carbon and the third phosphate at the fifth carbon so the compound will be formed at by this kinase will include phospho inositol 4 phosphate when this is phosphorylated uh, phospho inositol 4 5 bis phosphate will be formed so this is the derivative of the phosphatidyl inositol which functions as a second messenger so when this compound is again phosphorylated it leads to the formation of pi 3p or pi p3 triphosphate so this is this compound is of most important most importance because the enzymes that are responsible for the formation of this, this compound are easily activated by a large number of extracellular signalings so this compound is of extreme importance uh, also this pip3 is involved in the pathways which lead to the human cancers also this pip3 is involved in the pathways of the insulin further there are enzymes that add a phosphate group that is kinases which include pi4 kinase pi4 5 kinase there are um, there are enzymes that remove the phosphate group that uh, remove the phosphate group these are known as phosphatases phosphatases with the example of phosphatases include p10 this is the enzyme that removes the phosphate group from this compound further this derivatives this derivatives further bind to the ph domain of the effector molecule the effector molecule is plc beta this plc beta is the effector molecule it has the ph domain so this derivatives bind to the ph domain of this plc beta this derivatives are further hydrolyzed okay so the binding of the uh, derivatives to the plc beta leads to the formation of will leads to the hydrolysis of the derivative further the pip3 which is involved which was which was formed by the phosphorylation of the phospho phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 bisphosphate this is involved in the chemotaxis so now what is chemotaxis chemotaxis is the movement of a cell towards a particular attractant so if i say this is a, a cell it moves moves towards light so the attractant will be light and the cell will move towards it so this is uh, this is another type of taxis which includes light but if i say there are chemicals which attract the cell towards them so that will be chemotaxis which includes the chemical and it, this chemicals attract the cell towards them so the pip3 it binds to the actin proteins that are present inside the cell so the pip3 when it binds to the actin proteins this lead to the formation of actin filaments as these are this are the cytoskeleton of the cell this leads to the formation of the or the change in the structure of the cell so the change in the structure of the cell makes the cell to move towards the uh, chemical or the attractant that leads to the movement of the cell towards the attractant so the if i talk about the summary the phosphatidyl inositol phosphorylation leads to the formation of the phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 bisphosphate which further binds to the ph domain of the phospholipase c beta this will further lead to the hydrolysis of the derivative so the derivatives act as a second messengers for the the P, pip3 which is formed by the phosphorylation of the phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 bisphosphate this act this act as the uh, act, this act in the chemotaxis by binding to the actin proteins so this was about the phosphatidyl phosphatidyl inositol phosphorylation if you like my video please do like subscribe share thank you